So help me God. He had just won a very close election, one of the closest in U.S. history. And he was aiming to unite the country. And so he deliberately avoided any topics that, would, that he felt were divisive. We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom. Early on in the planning stages, where he did include some issues on the domestic agenda, he decided to cut them out because he said it sounded too much like a campaign speech. The families without a decent home, the parents of children without a decent school, they all know that it's time for a change. It's a collaboration, like um, many of um, JFK's speeches were. There's a page that shows, it's in Ted Sorensen's hand. They worked very closely together. The notes are a little bit hard to read, but it has some of Kennedy's instructions. Eliminate all the eyes. Let's just talk about what we can do. Add style and eloquence. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. JFK was determined to keep his speech short. And so when he first started working on the speech, he asked Sorensen to count up the words of some of the more notable ones. At one point, he said, I don't want, I don't want people to think I'm a windbag. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Ask not, it's a signature phrase of the speech. And in it is really distilled an idea that had been his for months and years. You see that kind of language throughout many of his campaign speeches. The new frontier of which I speak is not a set of promises. It is a set of challenges. It sums up not what I intend to offer to the American people, but what I intend to ask of them. The new frontier is not what I promise I'm going to do for you. The new frontier is what I ask you to do for our country. I really like the reading copy of the speech. It was ready for him to study just a day or two before the inauguration. And he had it with him almost all the time. And he made about 30 or 31 slight changes to the text, even while he was up there delivering, really, the speech of his life. In the reading copy, it says, ask not what your country will do for you, but he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And it's just that much sharper. He was speaking in the midst of the Cold War. They were grim times. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, he faced them, and at the same time, he was able to do it in a way that lifted the spirits of people. So I think there is greatness in that. Let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. <laughs>